diagram of bodies and static forces. Also, we can also discuss the equilibrium of forces in fluids, that is, liquid and gases. And this brings us to mind the Archimedes principle, which states that when a body is totally or partially immersed in a fluid, that is liquid or gas, it experiences an uptrust which is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. So this is the Archimedes principle. So an object can experience an uptrust, an upward force, which is also known as a buoyant force, when it is placed in a fluid. Here, yeah, fluid means either liquid or gas. So it appears as if there is a force that pushes the object upward. So that explains Archimedes' principle. Then in this uh, topic also, we are also going to look at the principle of flotation. So the principle of flotation states that when an object floats in a fluid, again, a fluid means either it is a liquid or gas. When uptrust is certain upon it by the fluid in which it floats equals the weight of the object. So the principle of flotation states that an object will float in a fluid. When the uptrust is exerted upon it by the fluid in which it floats equals the weight of the object. Meaning that from Archimedes' principle, if an object, if the weight of the object is greater than the uptrust, it sinks. If the weight of the object is equal to the uptrust exacted on, him by the, on it by the liquid, that is the buoyant force, the object will float in that liquid or fluid or gas rather, or gas. But if the uptrust is greater, then the object will be displaced upward. So this, with these two uh, principles, we can study the equilibrium of objects in fluid. Now, I'll go back to my introduction with the simple examples that I have there. So I'm going to do the calculation and see how we can determine the tension on either strings or measuring uh, springs, which are used to measure the weights of objects. So I take this example, a body of mass, 3 kilograms, and volume, 4 times 10 raised to power minus 4 meters cube is hung from a balance graduated in newtons. What is the reading of the balance when the body is in A, F, B, fully immersed in water, C, one third immersed in water, that is one third of its volume immersed in water, and D, fully immersed in paraffin. So the density of water is 10 raised to power 3 kilograms per meter cube. Density of paraffin is 800 kilograms per meter cube. So let us um, get the solution. Now, what we are going to do is this. I'm going to write down some formulas, and we're going to use those formulas to solve for this problem. First of all, let's look at this. So the uptrust or the buoyant force exerted on the solid is equal to the density of the liquid times the volume of the solid times acceleration due to gravity. In this class, I'm going to be using the acceleration due to gravity to be equal to 10 meters per second squared. So that's what we're going to be using for this, the approximated value of 10 meters per second squared. So to get the weight in air, so that's the uptrust. Again, we are going to have this. So uptrust is equal to weight in air, which I'm going to call W1, minus weight in liquid, which is W2. So the weight in liquid is also referred to as the apparent weight of the, of the solid in the liquid. So you can see that from, we have two formulas to calculate uptrust. Uptrust is equal to density of liquid times volume of solid times acceleration due to gravity. 
and again up thrust is called the weight in air, which I'm going to refer to as W1 here, minus weight in liquid, which is I'm going to also refer to as W2, or the apparent weight. So the other name of this, of the weight in air, is the apparent weight. of solid so let's go back to the question proper and see what we are going to do so the mass of the body is 3 kilogram and the volume of the body is 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 meters cube then we have to find the weight in air to find the weight in air the weight in air is simply going to be equal to W1, which I have referred to as the weight in air, so I'm going to be using W1 as weight in air, is equal to the mass of the object times acceleration due to gravity. So the mass of the object is 3, so W1 is going to be equal to 3. I'm using the value of G as 10 meters per second squared, so 3 times 10, so that's going to give me 30 Newton. So that is the weight in air. So this gives results to one above weight in air. So the next one is when fully immersed in water. So to get the weight when fully immersed in water or the reading on the balance when the body is fully immersed in water, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use this formula here. Up thrust is equal to density of liquid times volume of solid times acceleration due to gravity. Then we know that up thrust is equal to weight in air, W1, minus weight in liquid. So here, I'm not going to, because I have two liquid, I'm going to use w, w sub W for water, and I'm going to use W sub W for paraffin for, the, for clarity to differentiate between the two liquids. So I'm going to get this to II. So up thrust when fully immersed in water, I'm going to call it this U1, is equal to rho W, meaning the density of water times the volume of solid times acceleration due to gravity. And now we know that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second square. The volume of the solid is 4 times 10 raised to power minus 4 meters cube, and we know the density of water as 10 raised to power 3. So this is the density of water here. So let me slot those ones inside this. I'm going to have U1. So I'll just punch this from my calculator as 10 exponential theory times 4 exponential minus theory times 10 is equal to 10 1 exponential theory that's exponential 10 exponential theory that's 10 raised to the power 3 times 4 exponential minus theory minus 4 rather it's minus 4 not minus theory it's minus 4 times 10 that's going to give me 4 new thing now again when we go back to this you see that up thrust is equal to weight in air minus weight in liquid so that will give us the apparent weight which is going to be the weight of the the apparent weight is going to be the reading on the balance so i'm just going to do this so i'm going to do this so u1 is going to be equal to the weight in air minus the weight in water when fully immersed in water so from here you can see that when i make this the subject of the formula that's going to be the reading on the balance so when i make this the subject of the formula i'm going to have the weight the apparent weight or the apparent weight of the object in water is equal to W1 minus U1. I hope you understand this. I just moved this this way and I brought this this way to make this the subject of the formula. So that's going to give us 
So the weight in F from our previous calculation is 30 newton minus the up, up, up thrust in water is 4 newton. So that's going to give us 30 minus 4, that's 26 newton. So it means that the reading on the balance is equal to 26 newton when fully immersed in water. So let's go to the B part of C part of this. C, when one third of the volume is immersed in water. So C, I'm going to have one third of the volume. In this case, okay, let me do this. In this case, the up thrust, the up thrust, let me call this U2, is going to be one third of the volume, that is rho density of water divided by 3 times the volume of solid times acceleration due to gravity. Why am I using this? It's different from this that I used here because for this, it is the whole of the solid that is immersed in, immersed in water. Now for this, one third of it is immersed in water. So it means that the density of water times this volume of the solid acceleration due to gravity divided by three. Assuming it was three quarter that was immersed in the liquid, it's going to be three times P, uh, rho W times Vs times G divided by four. Assuming it was three quarter, assuming it was one fifth, so you're going to divide by five. So I'll just plug all of this in. We know what our density is, so this is going to give us U2. It's going to give us the density of water is 10 raised to the power 3 times the volume of solid 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 times 10 divided by 3. So apparently my answer is going to be my previous answer when I did the numerator here was 4. So I have to divide 4 by 3, or you can just multiply all of this out. So 4 divided by 3, that's 1.33. 1.33 Newton. Remember, this is the up thrust. Again, so to get the weight, let me call this uh, W weight of water to when it measures in by uh, this thing. So it's going to give me what? The weight in liquid, the weight in air minus up thrust in liquid. I do not have to start it from here again since I've already made this the subject of one. So I just uh, slot that into this. So this is going to give me the weight in air is 40, uh, 30 rather. Sorry for that. 30. Okay. It's going to be 30 minus the up thrust 1.33. So that's going to give me 30 minus 1.33. That's going to give me 26, 28.67 Newton. So again, the reading on the balance, the reading on the balance is 28.67 newton when one third of the volume is immersed in the in water. And finally, let's go to this. When it is fully immersed in paraffin, look at the density of paraffin here. So this time around, we're not going to use 1,000 because this time around, I'm going to. Um, Call this the up thrust in the in the up thrust in paraffin D. Let me call it that U P U paraffin. So that's going to give us equal to the density of paraffin rho P times the volume of solid times acceleration due to gravity. So the up thrust exerted on the solid by paraffin is equal to the density of paraffin. The density of paraffin is 800 kilogram per meter cube. So I have 800 times the density of the volume of the solid, which is 4 times 10 raised to power minus 4. So I have 4 times 10 raised to power minus 4 times G, which is acceleration due to gravity. Remember, I'm using the approximate value. So work this out. 800 times 4 exponential minus 4 times 10 that will give me 3.2 newton you can actually work this out easily by doing this 8 times 4 is 32 and you have a 10 raised to power 2 
these two zeros here so we have 10 raised to the power 2 minus 4 plus 2 is minus uh, 2 plus 1 that is minus 1 and I, remember I have 32 so I have to move it back one by one so I have 3.2 Newton so that's the ultras so the reading on the spring balance let me call that W paraffin it's not going to be equal to the ultras uh, sorry the weight in air which I use as W1 minus the ultras exerted by paraffin on the solid so that's going to give us WP equals 30 minus 3.2 so that's going to give us 30 minus 3.2 that's going to give us 26.8 Newton so that is the reading on the balance when it is immersed on paraffin when it is fully immersed remember that this way that we have calculated are the apparent weight of the object this is the apparent weight of the mass when it was immersed in paraffin this is the apparent weight this is the apparent weight of the mass when it was immersed when it one third of it is it was immersed in the in water and uh, this is the weight okay this is the apparent weight of the object this year when it was fully immersed in the liquid and this is the weight of the object in this is the weight of the object in air this is the weight of this is the ultras on the object so the ultras on the object is referred to as the loss in weight or the buoyant force i hope that uh, we have gained a uh, a little bit from this or if not a lot if there is any question that you want to ask me regarding this please do not hesitate to you know drop your questions on the comment session do not forget to like subscribe and also share this video thank you very much see you some other time this is your science